Well, here we are again. Episode 129 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio is about to roll. On this episode, we're going to talk about how you can better handle those stumbles, those setbacks that you'll inevitably experience in your martial arts training. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host for this show, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, I am so proud to say, makes the absolute best sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back to listen again. All of our past episodes, show notes, and a whole bunch more great stuff is available over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I hope that you do, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, great discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests on the show. Everyone stumbles. Everyone falls. Sometimes, as martial artists, we fall, literally. We take our shots. Man, there, there are a lot of cliches that apply literally when we talk about martial arts, aren't there? Which is why the best martial artists seem to be the best with handling adversity. It's impossible to live a life that doesn't deal with setbacks. And there's a lot of advice on how to handle that. But how about handling setbacks that occur within your training or your martial arts school. While there are tons of different things that you could experience, they really come down to only two types. Setbacks by your definition, and setbacks by others' definitions. You could make the argument that you shouldn't care what other people think, that the opinions of others don't matter, but that's a pretty idealistic view, and frankly, one that most people aren't ready to accept. Even when they do accept it, It's really hard, almost impossible, to let your feelings line up with that belief. And what if the opinion is something coming from your instructor? What do you do then? For this episode, we're going to lump the two together. Because really, it's how you respond to the situation that matters. You can't control the opinions of others. And the tools we're going to give you are for you. You can't make someone else implement them. Besides... If someone sees what you've done as a setback and you don't, does it matter? You may have noticed that I didn't use the word failure in that intro, and that's for good reason. I actually won't let people use that word when I'm teaching, especially the way some use it today, describing something as a fail, meaning a poorly executed attempt. The word failure has a finality to it. You've failed. You're done. There are no other options. In martial arts, there's almost always another option, another chance to try. I'd encourage you to look at that word's usage in your life if you do use it. Words have a lot of power. Which brings us to our first bit of advice. Choose your language and stay positive. Ours is a world where tech speak and slang abound, whether we like that or not. Every word, every single word has a meaning and an energy behind it. And the words that you choose have an effect on your being and everyone around you. Let's say you've competed at a tournament and you've completely botched your form. If it's your first time, you might be tempted to make a lot of excuses. I didn't know what I was doing or I'm no good at this. Those word choices have significant impact and can actually program your subconscious over time. If you keep saying, I'm not good at this, guess what? You're never going to be. It takes your mind to lead your body in a direction. And you won't catch me letting anyone talk like that in a class that I'm teaching, whether it's martial arts or something else. How do you handle that situation then? You have to say something, right? There are probably people there that you know At the very least, you're going to talk to yourself. You're disappointed. You're hurt with your outcome. You could say, I know a lot more than I did coming in. Or, this is a challenge I'm willing to take on. Or, maybe it's something you just wanted to do once. Well, I got out there and I did my best. And it didn't go the way I wanted, but now I know. If you think about the facial expressions that people would have when they're saying these things, you can see that the three that I mentioned at the end are far more positive 
than the first two that I said. That positivity is absolutely key to overcoming any setback, whether it's in life or in martial arts, whether it's a botched form at a competition or a failed rank exam. Second bit of advice, admit your mistakes. Missteps can be excellent teachers, but only if you're willing to admit them. I'm not talking about literal missteps or you settling into the wrong stance during basics. I'm talking about real errors and most likely the kind that makes you say, I knew better. Martial arts classes can be emotional places. They're often hot. There's a lot of energy. And sometimes there's a competitive edge that can come between people. When you think about it, it's incredible that this combination doesn't lead to more incidents, but sometimes it does. We're all guilty of it. I recall some instances in my teens, and if I want to be really honest, even in the last five years, that I've had to go back and make amends for. Maybe I shouldn't say I had to. I chose to. We're all human beings, and we're training to become better human beings. We're going to falter. But part of the progress that martial arts supports is admitting when you've screwed up. If you got hot-headed and hit someone harder than you needed to, apologize. If you miss the opportunity in the moment, it's not too late. If you came to class with outside thoughts on your mind and you were a bad partner to someone, tell them you're sorry. These sorts of setbacks only stick if you don't apologize, if you don't make them right. You don't want to be known as the person in your school who doesn't seem to care about their own actions. Showing humility and an ability to admit when you're wrong will go a long way in your training, as well as being someone that others want to train with. Our third bit, know when to say when. Sometimes our body fails us. Martial arts, for all the mental aspects, is rooted in physical practice. Everyone will experience setbacks related to their body at some point in their training. Pulled muscles, broken bones. You know, I doubt there's an active martial arts class anywhere in the world where at least one person in the class isn't nursing some sort of injury. Those physical issues can be some of the toughest to handle because they can mean a change in your training, maybe even no training at all. We talked a lot about recovery and rehabilitation on episode 77. It's crucial that you recognize a physical setback as a lesson. You did something wrong. It may not have been wrong in that moment, yet somewhere along the line, you should have done something differently, something better. If you don't think you did, well, why did you get hurt, right? Your body doesn't just spontaneously fall apart. Maybe you tore a muscle throwing a kick. Did you throw it higher than you should have? Was your form poor? Did you not warm up properly? Maybe there was a minor pull in the muscle that you chose to work through. Our body's a wonderful teacher, but only if we listen to it. Part four, use adversity as fuel. One of the best motivators I know is to tell someone they can't do something. For some people, that's a terrible thing to do. But for others, for those that have decent self-esteem, expressing minor doubt of their abilities will often yield renewed effort. Many of us see this in children, both in and outside of the martial arts. When someone tells us we can't do something, we have a choice as to how to respond. If we use it as motivation, it can be incredibly powerful. We talked about positive language earlier in the episode, and this is positive thinking. When someone says you can't and you say you can, it's no wonder this is effective. You've already decided on the outcome which is why it's important to take your lumps and redouble your efforts. If your sidekick isn't looking so good, practice it. If you're embarrassed at the way it looks, use that as inspiration to go back and improve. Practice it until it's good. Practice it until not only are you not embarrassed, but other people are pointing at your sidekick and saying, I want to do it like them. Practice it until you know you've got it down because you deserve to have a better sidekick. You are the only one standing in the way. One of my favorite motivational quotes comes from the Rocky movie, Balboa. This is only part of it. We'll link the video and full quote and text over on the show notes. 
whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. There's also going to be a transcript of today's episode over there. And here it is. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Or to say it in another way with another quote, success can be defined in many ways, but failure with only one. Quitting. Whatever the setback, take it as a challenge. Your martial arts path is a journey and there will be stumbles. Being a martial artist isn't easy. That's why so few people try martial arts. Even fewer stay in it and fewer still earn their black belt. There aren't a lot of people out there, relatively speaking, who have spent 30, 40, or 50 years doing anything, and even fewer who have spent that time in martial arts. Ours is a path to becoming better people, but that development means facing obstacles and overcoming them. And I'll leave you with one more quote from Carl Jung. I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. We'd love to know what you thought about today's episode. So get to us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, or you can head on over to the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and leave us some feedback there. That's also a great place if you want to be a guest or you have an idea for a show topic or you want to recommend somebody else to be on the show, fill out the form over on the website. Don't forget to subscribe so you always get the new episodes Mondays and Thursdays when they come out. And you can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com. That's it for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.